Okay, welcome, welcome, welcome. Some great things to talk about today, folks. Some really good stuff to talk about. Uh, I am looking forward to covering some details with you guys. Always great to see everybody. Just a reminder for anybody that's new, that's visiting us for the first time, I'm Jared Johnson in the flesh. Uh, this is my website, Day Traders FX. This is my Twitter, Day Traders FX. This is my email, Jared at Day Traders FX. Does anybody have any questions about that? I think we covered that. But uh, anyways, uh, any question for anybody uh, or that anybody has for me, just don't even hesitate to uh, uh, holler at me. I'm happy to help with anything I can. So there you go. That's me. The goal of this webinar is to discuss what a couple of strong and weak currency pairs are this week, some things that I want to be looking to trade, any important news announcements, and a little bit of stock market and commodity activity. Uh, so that's kind of what we want to talk about. Um, this is, uh, the, the, these are my own trade ideas. So trade at your own risk. Um, remember that trading is very risky and can be very crazy. So just make sure that you're, uh, uh aware of that and that you're not taking risks that you can't afford to, uh, um, cover. So. That's that. And then once again, there's a picture of me and my little alien. You see a little antenna right there in our glasses. It's the alien, the alien traders here. So uh, that's us. Happy Monday to everybody. Nice to see you all. Very good to see everybody. Uh, remember that you can get a uh, you can get a free trial to the trade group right here. If you are so inclined uh, to do so, we'd love to have you. And we have a whole week of fantastic trading coming up and some really good things to watch. We made some good money last week. We're going to make some good money again this week, and we'll probably do it again next week. Um, here are some of the news announcements that we see this week. Uh, I'm, I'm always keeping an eye for daylight savings. I forget when that happens. Uh, Monday is kind of a, you know, it's kind of a meh news announcement kind of a day. Nothing too crazy happening. We got some bank holidays in the U.S., bank holidays in Canada, uh, which I don't understand why the Bank of uh, Canada uh, is giving a speech today or why they did, but it's bank holidays. So anyway, um, Tuesday, though, we get a little bit of activity coming out. The CPI for the U.K. Uh, will be happening, some German zoo numbers, CPI for China. Uh, and then we get some uh, uh, employment numbers for um, for, for the UK and that can be a bit of a mover. So we're probably going to do a live news announcement for that, uh, live session. Uh, we have retail sales in the U S um, yes, clocks are changing. They're all starting to change everywhere. That is for sure. Simon, that is for sure. Uh, retail sales numbers, U S uh, Wednesday, we will be doing some, um, a Australian employment numbers. We'll be doing a live session for that. So be ready for that. That'll be exciting. Uh, and then we have some CPI numbers for the U.S. on Thursday and, and some more um, central bank news and so on. So we just have, we don't have any really earth shattering news announcements this week, but we have enough stuff that'll keep the markets moving. So I think this is going to be a really well-balanced week. And I'm looking forward to it. Uh, as we see, see things kind of moving around, gold hasn't gone much of anywhere. We see oil forever stuck between $45 and $50, which honestly is totally great with me. I'd rather see it at $35 or $25, but whatever. Nobody's asking. Um, and uh, so overall, it's just kind of staying um, staying as is. So, so there is uh, oil for us. Um, and then we've got... Uh, we've got some good setups to be looking at. Um, over the last week or so, we have seen a pretty heavy amount of, well, even more than last week, last week and a half. Uh, we've seen a pretty heavy amount of New Zealand dollar strength and Australian dollar strength. And we've seen the U.S. dollar just kind of get pushed around. It's not really, really strong or really weak. It's just doing really nothing. Um, and we've seen the pound kind of uh, a little bit on the weak side, but kind of just neutral a little bit as well. Uh, and we've seen uh, the euro. The euro's got a little tiny bit more strength, but not much. We're, we're, we're seeing a lot of what we want to focus on at the beginning of the week is which currency pairs are the strongest and which are the weakest and which ones have, have moved far enough that we can look to trade a correction. That's basically our whole goal right now. Where's the strength? Where's the weakness? And where's something that's gone far enough that we can start looking at uh, some reversal activity. So let's just talk about some of the Australian and New Zealand pairs for a couple of moments, and then we'll look at everything else. Yen pairs, 
not doing much. The yen is a little bit on the weak side, uh, but overall, it's not really doing much. The yen, the dollar, the euro, the pound, those are just kind of, uh, but New Zealand, Australia, Canada, we're seeing some good strength and some good weakness in those pairs. The Canadian dollar has been fairly weak the last uh, week or so, and the New Zealand and, and Australian dollar have been fairly strong the last week or so. So we want to kind of look at those as opportunities for trading. So the Australian dollar has made this really nice move. Remember, our indicator is telling us that we have some decent uh, um, some decent numbers coming up on the daily chart. It's nothing too wild and crazy and, and nuts, but it's, it's decent. We're getting some good numbers up here. So I'm looking for the Australian dollar to continue up into this 75, 50, 7,600 area. I'm looking for it to reach that 200 moving average and to get up there. But here is something that we do see happening, and we see that the Australian dollar is starting to get a little bit overextended on the shorter-term charts because, like we said over the last week, Australian dollar has been going pretty strong. We took a 75 pip trade on the Australian dollar last week, and we should have just forgotten about it and stayed in it for another 100 pips because it would have hit that profit target too. Um, but it, it's looking really good. The, the Australian dollar is looking good, but it's getting a little overextended on the short term. The one-hour chart could continue going a bit further without too much trouble. But the 15-minute chart is starting to get into, um, you know, a little bit of overbought uh, uh, territory. We're currently sitting about 35 to 40 pips from the, the pivot and the 200 moving average. And we've got a bit more to go to get into the to the bottom of this channel here, about 60 pips. So I'm definitely, absolutely positively looking for the Australian dollar uh, to move a little bit down before continuing up. Now, if it bounces up a little tiny bit, I'm going to look for some, uh, uh, I'm going to look for some, uh, opportunities to sell some rallies. But ideally, I'd like to get a short-term sell this week on Australian dollar down to about 73, 73.25, maybe even a little bit lower, maybe 73.10, somewhere in that general area. I'd like to short it down to there. And then I want to take profit and jump out, and I want to start looking for opportunities to buy the Australian dollar around 70, between 72.80 and 73.00. Right around there is where I'm going to start looking to buy the Australian dollar. If it goes crazy and it runs down to 7,200, then I'll be shorting the heck, or I'll be buying the heck out of it from that level. But I'm kind of looking for 7,280 to 7,300 to buy the Australian dollar. And any little bumps up right now, I want to short uh, down to that 7,300 zone. Um, uh, <laughs> there you go, Simon. There you go. There you go. So, yes, yes. So I agree. I think short is great right now. And I think it's got, you know, hopefully about 50 pips, maybe a bit more, but around 50 pips to run before we're starting to look for opportunities to buy it around that 7280 to 7300. So that's what I see happening. And again, I see the Australian dollar running all the way up into, you know, the 200 moving average and beyond. We've got some missed pivots up here. 7550 is a great target. So we've got, you know, I'm just trying to take things, you know, two to 300 pips at a time here. So that little move down to 70, 7,300 and even a little bit below will hopefully get us back on track to hit 75.50. Okay, so that's Australian dollar. That's looking good. Uh, the Aussie CAD has made this wild run. So the Canadian dollar over the last week has been one of the weaker currencies. And the Australian dollar over the last week has been uh, just about the strongest currency. So it's no surprise that we see the Aussie CAD just making this wild and crazy run up over the last several days. It's up 300 pips. Nice little move there. Uh, we don't have any really overextended numbers anywhere on the Aussie CAD except for the lower time frame. So we start looking at the 15-minute chart, and this is looking pretty good. It's, it's currently sitting um, about 65 pips from the 200 moving average. I'm probably... I hate to sound like a chicken here, but because of how much Canadian weakness we're seeing in Australian strength, I'm probably not going to sell the Aussie CAD unless we get a really, really great uh, setup for it, like a great price pattern that can take us back down into this 9,500 zone. Otherwise, I'm just going to be watching for the Aussie CAD to dip. We know that it's a little overextended on the 15-minute chart, so we're going to be watching for this to dip, and we're going to be looking for opportunities to buy the Aussie CAD uh, between about 95.50, excuse me, 94.50 and 9,500. So I just want to see it dip down a bit. Um, ideally, around 94.50 would start to be some interesting, uh, interesting areas to start uh, uh, picking up some Aussie, uh, some Aussie cadness. So you can see we've got, you know, we've definitely got some some activity down there, uh, and we may even get all the way down to the weekly pivot point. But I'm going to be looking for buy zones down around here for the Aussie CAD. So I want to keep buying the Australian dollar. I think. 
I think the Australian dollar is going to keep going. I think, uh, um, uh, the, you know, we're going to get a decent trend. Commodity prices are a little tricky, so it's going to be interesting to see how that goes. But I think we've got some good opportunity with, with Australia and New Zealand for a bit longer. So loving the Aussie CAD, loving the Aussie dollar. Um, Euro Aussie, I like Euro Aussie. Remember, the Euro Aussie has hit the 38% fib already. Uh, but we do have a nice little trend line right here. And I'm going to keep an eye on this guy. Uh, the, the, the Euro Aussie, uh, if it makes any kind of run up, for example, to hit, you know, the, the, the weekly pivot point up here at 156.50 area, which is a long ways. I'm not really counting on it. Uh, any runs up, I'm going to be looking to, to get some confirmation to short the Euro Aussie. I think this will be a good opportunity. It's running. This is a, this is a pretty long, big trend line right here. This goes all the way back to May and we've been testing it all the way up. Uh, and then we made a high and a lower high, and now it's just coming down. I don't really anticipate any major Euro strength, and I'm, I'm still looking for more Australian strength. So I think, I think uh, shorting any rallies on the Euro Aussie is a good idea. Uh, we're right at this trend line, and, and we've got a good opportunity to trade this down into the 150 area and even potentially beyond. So you can see that it's made this big run up here. Uh, if we look at kind of this long-term uh, move. It's it's just barely, as we talked about, hit that 38% fib, and the next fib is down there. That 50% fib's around 151, uh, about 15100, and, and and so on. So that's kind of my next zone there. So again, I'm keeping my eye. I'm looking for continued uh, Australian strength, and I'm looking for uh, you know a little correction, but I want to see some Aussie strength and I want to see some New Zealand strength. So those are the three Aussie pairs I'm going to be watching this week. The Aussie dollar, I want to short uh, the Aussie dollar just a little bit and then continue buying that one. Uh, Aussie CAD, I want to uh, maybe short this one, but I'm not really anxious to do that. I'm more anxious to just buy the dips on Aussie CAD. Um, and then the uh, the Euro Aussie, um, I want to short any rallies on this one and kind of trade it down from there. I think it'll be a good opportunity. Um, I'll just mention the Aussie New Zealand really quick. I don't think this is a great pair to trade right now because we have Australian strength and New Zealand strength. And so I think this is going to be a risky one. It's going to be choppy like it has been. You can see that the last uh, uh, the last little while has, you know, all last week was or the week before was choppy. We had a little move down. Last week was totally choppy and we're going choppy again. Uh, and, and it's been super choppy the last couple of months. And so it's coming off this big support, which I like. We've, we've talked about this quite a bit. Uh, I may, just may, look for opportunities to buy the Aussie New Zealand around 109.25 area uh, and, and keep some tight stops on it and see if we can trade it up. But this one most likely will be pretty choppy. We have two strong pairs um, that we don't want to mess around with too terribly much. So two strong pairs are in there. Um, and so we need to be a little bit careful uh, with that one. So mostly Aussie dollar, Aussie CAD, uh, Euro Aussie are going to be my focus there. Okay, so let's move into New Zealand pairs. I'm looking for New Zealand strength to continue as well after a little bit of a dip. We basically have the exact same setups on all the New Zealand pairs as we do on the uh, Australian pairs. So um, uh, New Zealand's been strong. Uh, I'm looking for the New Zealand dollar to make its way all the way back up to this 200 moving average and potentially beyond. It's not that far now. It's only 170 or so pips away. Uh, I'd like to see this one dip down uh, about 100 pips, maybe a little bit more, and, and be able to start buying into that just a little bit. Um, we're getting decently overextended on the one-hour chart. So so I'm pretty good with, with a short-term kind of selling uh, position on the uh, New Zealand dollar on the one hour chart, trading this down to 66, you know, like I said, about 100 pips, trading it down to about 66.15 or so. Uh, and then, you know, that weekly pivot and kind of hanging on to it from there and starting to look for opportunities to to buy that dip. Uh, the, the, the 15 minute chart is very overextended, but it's only just a handful of pips away from the 200 moving average, uh, about 15 or 20 pips or so from the 200 moving average. So not really looking at the short term chart too much there, but I think this one hour chart has, you know, anywhere from 50 to hundred pips of potential downward movement before I'm buying those dips and trading this right back up again. So liking the New Zealand dollar, great opportunity there. Um, Euro New Zealand is kind of an interesting pair. I think we're going to see a lot of strength on the New Zealand dollar against the Euro. Uh, I think we'll see that continue. 
Um, it's kind of a it's kind of a wacky setup that we have here. It's uh, we had a nice little um, uh, wedge here forming. We broke out. We made a nice little move down, uh, and then here we are, kind of just bouncing around on this uh, on these lower time frames. Uh, the one hour chart's getting a little oversold, nothing amazing, uh, may give us some opportunities to trade a little breakout up because once again, I'm looking for, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for all of these, you know, Australian and New Zealand pairs to, to pull back a little bit against, um, the Australian and New Zealand strength that they've seen. I want to see, I want to see the Aussie and New Zealand dollar weaken a little bit against a few of these. And then I'm jumping right back into them in the direction of Australia and New Zealand strength. Uh, so that's what I'm going to be looking for there. So the Euro New Zealand's decent. It's not amazing, but it's decent. Uh, and the New Zealand dollar looks pretty good. There's a really nice setup there, so I'm liking that a lot. Um, as far as the rest of these pairs go, uh, I don't think the yen pairs have much to offer us uh, for the moment. Lots and lots and lots of chop on yen pairs. Uh, and the yen is kind of getting pushed around with whoever has more weakness or strength at the time. Um, and so... So I, I like pairs like the New Zealand yen and the Aussie yen because I think those are, you know, getting uh, uh, some nice imbalances there between strength and weakness. Um, but that's probably all the yen activity that I'm going to do. We're, we're, we're still waiting for the uh, dollar yen to run up about 100 pips and we're going to short it uh, around 12100. But that's incredibly sideways. Uh, and the dollar yen can go super sideways for two or three or four months at a time before it finally breaks out. And I wouldn't be surprised to see that happen. We'll be ready for any breakout activity on the dollar yen, but but uh, we're not going to hold our breath on that one. Uh, just real quick on the euro and pound pairs. Uh, nothing much for the pound until middle of the week, so I'm just not even going to talk about that one too much. Um, but the euro dollar... Uh, has made a decent little run up. We had a nice run up there on Friday. It shot up about 100 pips. Uh, and so the euro has kind of gotten out of some of the chop. I'm ultimately looking for the euro to continue its strength. We were looking for the euro to dip down to about 110-ish area. And then uh, uh, and then it never did. It got down into, you know, 111.50 or so. Didn't, didn't quite get to what we were looking for. Um, and so, so I think that the euro is going to be able to hold medium well. Sounds like I'm cooking food now. Uh, I think the euro is going to be able to hold medium well, uh, uh, you know, at that 11300 level. So I like 11300 on euro dollar. I think this is a good area for this pair, um, and and I want to be buying euro dollar around 11300. Uh, I think it's a decent one to short. Uh, it's coming off the top of this short-term trend line very nicely. A little short-term topping pattern right there. Everything's looking good. Uh, I'm, I may not get into it short. I don't think it's a bad idea to be short. I think it's going to go down. But I don't know if I have a great enough entry to really want to get into this one on the short side. But I am going to be looking to buy it around 1.1300 uh, once again. Maybe a hair below 1.1300. So if that kind of gives you a little bit of a feel of what I'm doing... Uh, looking for a little bit of Australian New Zealand dollar correction the first part of the week, and then I'm looking to trade in the direction of strength for Australia and New Zealand uh, the rest of the week. Uh, looking for a bit of a dip on the euro dollar, and then I think we can get a nice uh, continuation up on that one. Um, and then yen pairs, we're just kind of holding, we're just on the sidelines with yen pairs. I just think we're we're, we're, we're not going to see a lot of activity uh, uh, there. And so uh, so I'm going to stay out of the yen for a couple of days or a week or however long we need to to get some good setups there. Um, good, good time. And I think that's great. I think uh, short off the euro. Yeah, I think uh, I think this thing's got 50 pips or so to move down. Um Good, good, Bob. You're doing the same thing. I think. Yeah, I, I think that's totally great. I don't. I don't see you know a good enough setup for me to get in, but but I think that you know I think this thing's going to drop at least 50 pips. So anybody that's short, especially if you're already in a little bit of profit, then it's a pretty easy. It's a pretty easy trade. And the 15 minute chart's got a little tiny bit of you know of of pull on that as well. So so I think the I think the euro dollar is going to be a good bet. So we're we're sitting out of a lot of the yen pairs this week. We're going to sit out. Some of the regular dollar pairs and uh, kind of take it from there. Canadian pairs, uh, we'll talk about those as the week goes on as well and kind of what we're going to do there. But we're going to shift our focus a little bit over to uh, Australia, New Zealand and kind of keep an eye on some of those. Uh, of course, other things will pop up this week and we'll have other opportunities and other things to trade. But I think that's going to be it.
So thanks, everybody. Thanks for attending. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this is helpful. Uh, remember to send me a uh, uh, text, an email, a Twitter message, anything here. Uh, if you have any questions about anything at all, I will be more than happy to help. You can get a hold of me there uh, day or night, uh, and uh, I'll be happy to chat with anyone. So thanks for attending. Thanks for being here. Nice to see you all. Happy Monday. Let's make a whole bunch of dollars this week. Thanks, everybody.